spelled hello. So here we are again. I'm Katrina. This is Lisa. Yes, and today's topic is about this book, Medical Apartheid, which I read while we were both vacationing in the Philippines. And the reason why I wanted to bring Lisa along is because I was reading parts to her and both of us couldn't believe it. So I just wanted you to also hear my thoughts as well as hers. Um, like for example, one of the things was this Tuskegee experiment from 1932 to 1972. It lasted 40 years. I didn't realize it was that long. It was a, it incorporated 600 black participants in the experiment throughout the span of the Tuskegee experiment. Did you know that it was going on that long? No, I heard of it, but I thought it was like a couple of years. Right, me too. I only thought it was a couple of years and a lot of people don't know what the Tuskegee experiment is. It's basically, um, it's about uh, black men were, uh, who had syphilis, they, they, were sick, they were told that they were gonna get treatment, but they were actually not given treatment at all. They um, weren't given the treatment. And not only that, is the people with syphilis afterwards, they ended up unknowingly participating. A lot of them uh, were experimented on where people who were given syphilis were, or no, who, people who had syphilis actually were given this other medication experimental drug which ended up killing them which we'll go into later but anyway this medical apartheid book is written by this lady harriet washington she's super credible she um she was a fellow in ethics at harvard medical school fellow at the harvard school of public health she did senior research she's a senior research scholar at the national center for bioethics at tuskegee university She's a journalist, she's an editor for USA Today, where, you know, they need incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and you can look her up on YouTube. She's a very interesting lady to watch. Yeah, totally. Um, and uh, yeah, so like little things, her and I were like, oh my God, I can't yeah. believe this. Like this, these are all uh, uh, writings, journals, mm -hmm. books by doctors. This Dr. Josiah Knott, N-O-T-T. -T. He wrote articles. Uh, one of the articles, Types of Mankind, he talked about the black inferiority, how blacks should have, uh, basically, it, he proved, supposedly proved, that blacks were inferior because they have a long heel. So it says, not theorize that the distinctive knee joint and long heel of the black man proved he had been created as a submissive knee bender. What's wrong with it? You know, of course this was during slave times, but but it's affected so many people today, right? Well, because history is written by victors, so they can write whatever they want, mm -hmm. and you have to go, you have to be able to try to disprove it. And mm -hmm. that's and if one idea gets out there, mm -hmm. and then people build on the false idea, it's kind of like you do an equation, you know, one plus one equals two, two plus two equals four, and you keep building on that, that would be correct. But if you go one plus one equals three, and then you build on that, your, your whole premise is incorrect. Mm -hmm. and if the foundation was, and then the shoe was one plus one yeah. equals three, and then, yeah, all the mathematical yeah. equations after that yeah. are completely and, and wrong. that's what happens with this. People will base research on something that was incorrect to begin with, not realizing it, and then they just move forward with that because, well, these people were, well, at the time, were thought credible. Yeah. And of course, research is great, right? Evidence-based research is wonderful, but reading the book, you'll find out that these, uh, th this research were not credible at all. They didn't have a control group. They didn't have, you know, they basically completely falsified, lied about certain things. So I guess making sure that the methods was correct and the methods were incorrect. And I'm not gonna, we're not gonna go into it, but you know, read the book and you'll know. Uh, but there were doctors, you know, physicians, Dr. Hamilton, Dr. Sims, Dr. Bozeman, uh, Dr. Stimwell, Stillwell, I'm sorry. So they bought and raised slaves for, uh, for just pure experimentation. And a lot of us think that, oh yeah, it's the slaves, but you know, of course they can do anything with the slaves, but it's not even just the slaves. It's even the free person, the free people, the free persons of color that were roped into these experiments mm -hmm. too, as long as they were black, mm -hmm. you know? Um, look at this. Dr. Charles 
So he had, oh, this, so this Dr. Charles, what he did was he amputated, uh, he amputated legs, right? And so he had said, Dr. Charles White declared that blacks bear surgical operations much better than white people and would, and what would be the cause of insupportable pain for white men, a Negro would almost disregard. I have amputated the legs of many Negroes who have held the upper part of the limb themselves. With no anesthesia, let me remind you, with no anesthesia. So there, and you know, you will, we'll learn throughout the book that they're saying that you know, a lot of a lot of the black people are weak, but then it's so contradictory because if they're weak, then exactly how can some people can't tolerate anything? They have to have a painkiller for every every little thing. But now you have people actually having limbs removed without with, anesthesia, without, without anything that doesn't even bear thinking about. To be honest, yeah. And I mean, uh, a lot of the research, like uh, you know, they're talking about tetanus, so they're saying. Tetanus, Dr. Sims, again, attributed tetanus to be a disease of the lazy and of the weak, you know, that's why the slaves got them. Uh, later on, they figured out, of, of course, tetanus is a bacterial infection, mm -hmm. and all they needed to do, so a lot of the slaves were put with the swine, with the pigs, with the livestock, where, you know, were, in their feces, like you know. They were living in houses, they were living off the land. Off the land, very right. unsanitary and unclean. Mm -hmm. So this book is saying all they had to do was literally relocate the slaves, improve the slave dwellings, then the tetanus would go away. You know, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have happened in the first place. It's not because it's a black or a slave disease. It's because mm -hmm. of the unsanitary conditions. Which would have happened to anybody, no matter what their color. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just the experimentation in this book, I mean, I... I this I'm reading I re, I'm reviewing this book for the second time to take notes to let you know to talk about it today and I read through half of it I'm like oh you know what you guys are gonna have to read through the rest of it yourself because I started to get sick again you know because for example this poor slave named Sam he had some jaw pain you know and then of course uh, the doctor uh, Dr. Sims again wanted to make sure Dr. Sims yep so he wanted to perform surgery on this poor man and in front of a medical student. So they strapped him in a medical chair and they basically uh, took a large section of his jawbone, you know, and so his jawbone was removed without anesthesia. <laughs> and um, again, without anesthesia. And then this guy, Sam, you know, while he was healing, he escaped. And then this Dr. Sims, he wrote, Sam's mouth is always open in a wide grin, you know, is what he wrote in his books, you know. I don't know, just, just no respect, you know, well, lack of respect. But that's man to humanity to man. And they did not think that the black man or the black race were, were human. That's, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. And, um, and a lot of us are thinking, well, you know, if people don't have money, then of course they had to accept free experimentation or free research. However, page 105, it talks about there was a, no amount of money that could buy a black patient a bed in the private ward where well-to-do whites received care. So it wasn't about, it wasn't about money, it was purely about color, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what they could get away with. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, just again, we were talking about earlier lack of respect for uh, the, peop the pe uh, black people. Um, not only were they experimented on, but once, you know, once they, black people died, they were sent to where they were sent, you know. Uh, you know, especially if they died in the, the ward, the hospital wards, they would take these bodies immediately and take them to other research hospitals. So mm -hmm. you would never find your, your, your loved one's body again, mm -hmm. you know, so they're, they're just, they're, they didn't care. They just didn't care. They didn't care. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there was uh, another story in here where, you know, a few years later, one of the family members wanted their, their family's body and they knew where it was. It was in a, it was in a teaching facility and they wanted the body and they, they weren't even though they knew it was proven that that was their 
their family's body, they were still not able to, to claim it. They, they, it was ruled against them. And it was, this was like, this was not long ago. This was like the 1980s, you know? So this wasn't slavery time. This was now that this has happened, you know? So, um, what else? Oh, a lot of times when blacks were blamed for certain diseases, there were, this is the research where they're, they're intentionally false. One was that the, their, the, the what, what would happen is the person that's taking the census would just have to look at you and say, oh, you're, you're black or you're, you know, there's this one man, his name was mm, uh, Kuhn. So the census was taken one year. This, was, this is on page 149, you can read it yourself. Uh, census was taken. And so census takers accepted a neighbor's assessment or simply glance at a member of a family to determine its race, not even looking at the person. So this person could be white one year and, if, uh, and the second year, the same person was so white in 1850, but that year's state census recorded him as a mulatto free man. And then in 1860, the U.S. Census was listed, uh, this man, Kuhn, was listed as Indian. So, <laughs> you know, and then a lot of times, you know, uh, a different color was blamed for an actual disease, you know, when it wasn't even them. And in 1840, so in Massachusetts, 1840 census indicated that the town of Worcester, Massachusetts was the home of 103, 133 colored lunatics and idiots, but this was actually the number of a different color race, read, read it yourself, 100, page 148, uh, in Worcester State Hospital for the Insane. Up the street from where I grew up, by the way. Never knew that. She's not insane, though. She's oh. totally calm. No relation to craziness of her. She's, she's not crazy. I'm afraid that name. I know, right? Um, and then I, I already did I already talk about how a lot of times they misrepresented the colors of slaves because or or considered them free persons when they were slaves to avoid taxes. To avoid taxes yeah. Yes, because you tax property. Mm -hmm. So that's right. why you wouldn't have to pay the taxes on your slaves if you said that they were free people. And and they didn't know he was they, that was being said about them. Yeah, right. Uh, blacks blame for many diseases. This one called pellagra, uh, page 154. It's actually a nutrition deficiency disease, but they said, oh, it's, the, it's genetic, you know, black people have this, but no, it's, they found out later that it's because of nutrition, you know, you don't have proper nutrition, you, you get this. So any, any color, any race can actually get it. TB, it's uh, not, again, not genetic, but socioeconomic. Tetanus, um, the, the dirty, response. yeah, yeah, the infections that we were talking about earlier. Uh, so all they had to do was basically get the slaves in a better area, and then it, it had nothing to do with more black Scott tetanus. It's because of where they, the slaves were being put. Uh, ah, sickle cell, that's an interesting one. So with sickle cell disease, it's not, ex so with this one, the, it's, it's not a race disease, like, not only black people get sickle cell, but they found out it was related to malaria areas. So if you had uh, a place with a lot of malaria, you would tend to get sickle cell because it fought off uh, this malaria disease. So it was people in that area and people in that area were you know, um, they were all colors. They were black. They were um, Middle Eastern descent. You know, they had um, you know lighter skin colors. It's any any area with malaria, and it'll go into more of the exact different colors or races um, in in the book. And let's see, starting on page one fifty five, if you're interested in that one. And oh my gosh, there's still a lot more. More. Oh, and then a lot of people are, might be asking, well, why weren't black hospitals started in order to, you know, try to combat and have better research, you know, against, you know, for the black people? So anyway, there they did. They tried, and there were actually 147, in fact, around 19, 1908, and then the Carnegie Foundation came in. So this Dr. Flexner in 1908 from the Carnegie Foundation was brought in 
and he basically had said all uh, he basically closed down all the black hospitals except for two you know and i wonder what like clout these these two hospitals had you know maybe they had friends or family or i mean that's all it takes you know and then all, all of the other ones were shut down i mean and then you're thinking well maybe you know maybe they were shut down for for good reason you know that that uh, they were dirty or wh whatever. I mean, please, they're they're experimenting on people without just cause, you know. And then so you, they they have, you know. So who's this guy that has the right to shut down all of these black hospitals when the other hospitals weren't doing great themselves, weren't ethical themselves? I'm sure there there were things going on with them, yet they're still freestanding, you know. It's who you know? Yeah, it is who you know. You're right about that. Um, let's see. Any other input, other? So no. far, so far, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't a great book to read on a vacation, but it's definitely an eye opener, and the knowledge is out there. And so, for people that have obviously their own opinions, that's great. But broaden your horizons a little bit. Try reading something that's a little bit outside of what you're yes. normally reading, and see if you can come to some different conclusions about the way things happen. Because mm -hmm. especially nowadays, when we have so many wonderful mixes of all the different races. I, you can't say white, black anymore because people have grandsons, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. granddaughters, great grandsons, nieces, nephews that have all these different things. And would you want somebody experimenting on a, fa a family member mm -hmm. based on the color of their skin of which they have no choice over? Especially like you're saying, yeah, everybody has, we're, we're yeah. so mixed now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so more on the Tuskegee stuff that I didn't know. So, okay, so first, how did they even, how, okay, so oftentimes because black people know that they've been experimented on since slavery times, right? So during Tuskegee, how they were roped into this experiment was they got this guy uh, who was known to be a black philanthropist to, to um, have, to, to build up black communities, you know, his name was Julius Rosenwald. Unfortunately, he died. Uh, soon after this Tuskegee experiment had been started. Uh, but that's how all of these, the, the black people are thinking, oh, you know, Julius Rosenwald, they continue to use his name, is involved in it. You know, they used his name and that's, so this must be an experiment that we trust. Mm -hmm. And then that's how they got these people to, um, you know, join in, in, the, in this experiment and then not get treated on. And syphilis. So a lot of people think that syphilis is Sex is a sexually transmitted uh, disease. Yes, but well, they had found that the black people that were in this experiment, 61%, especially in this one place, Macon County, uh, it was congenital non venereal syphilis that they got. So even that was incorrect. Mm -hmm. I, you know that. So that's exactly how they got syphilis was from birth. Mm -hmm. um, and you were saying you used to work at a hospital yes, where. Yeah, so a lot of times a C-section would be recommended if somebody had this because you didn't want to transmit anything to the newborn coming through the birth canal. So mm -hmm. they would do a C-section. Mm -hmm. And so there were black physicians during this time. Why didn't they speak up and say anything? Well, it's because the AMA had barred their membership. They, they weren't allowed to participate in this when they were explaining this Tuskegee experiment. That's why they didn't even know about what was going on. That's why they couldn't say anything. Um, so of course now they can, but it's over, you know? Let's see what else. Oh, and these physicians who were involved in these experiments, None of them were ever charged or punishment punished. Yet this poor um, black nurse, she was charged for participating in this experiment, and she was just doing her job. You know, mm -hmm. she wasn't wealthy. She was she was a nurse. They they told her what to do. You know how to implement whatever they were implementing, uh, take down information, and she was charged. Yet the actual physicians themselves were not charged at all. You know, so. It's just, it's, it's, it's really unfair. So I guess we're just opening minds, you know, trying to, when, when you wonder why don't black people want to take vaccines or, you know, take some of these tests? Well, geez, for a long time, they were tested on, you know, a lot of, even a lot of medical physicians these days, uh, in my Instagram feed, in my, it, 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 it'll talk about this, um, doctor that was talking about how, what is it? I think over 50% of doctors today still believe that, um, Black people 
don't need as anesthesia or that they um, that they're a they don't feel pain like other people do they feel pain less you know than other races stupid but this is where it came from you know and the doctors still believe this uh, what else Oh, you know, women uh, now going into uh, women, uh, they've, you know, hysterectomies, other experimentation, a lot of times done without their consent mm -hmm. or their knowledge or without their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, that's not, that's definitely not legal. Uh, oh, crack babies. We, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, so I was under the misconception, you know, we've we all, we've heard of, especially what is it, the 90s, I think, mm -hmm. right? The 90s, they were talking about crack babies and, and uh, page 214, a baby cannot be born addicted to cocaine. Um, let's, see. let's see, none of this has been demonstrated by research and none of this was true. Although exposure to cocaine in the uterus, uterus can damage a fetus, fe, uh, fetus, a baby cannot be born addicted to cocaine as children are sometimes born addicted to other narcotic drugs, so not cocaine. So we have all these misconceptions about crack babies. Uh, so specifically, we're talking about crack cocaine, right? So in 1991, a meta-analysis, which means a combination of a, they looked at a bunch of old research about crack cocaine in babies, and they found out how a lot of times there, there weren't, um, uh, they, they didn't consider the tobacco and the alcohol in the mother and the baby system. You know, there was no control group. So just things like that. And that's so they made broad assumptions without being able to back up their research. Yep. And even when this the research had said, let's consider other um, other areas, they just negated it and just wanted to create that propaganda, create that story, you know, of the, the crack babies. Anyway, um, so we just have to, I guess, just don't follow what we're told. Really look into it a little bit deeper, look into more of the information. Um, you know, now, you know, cops, they're taking our DNA. Even, you know, even if you're not a non, even if you're not a violent criminal offender, if you've just been stopped by the police, They'll, they'll take your DNA to be used later. This book just goes into a little bit. You can read, read into that yourself. And be aware of the overseas experimentation, especially South Africa, you know, the Philippines. They put, um, they, they released mosquitoes, you know, with dengue fever to see how it affects the population. You know, that's only one. Uh, in 1981 to 1993, there's this, there's this Project Coast in South Africa. It goes into it, uh, you know, 378 and on. You can read that on your own and be aware. So the, it, it talks about in, on page 390 that the third world has become the laboratory of the West and Africans have been the subjects of novel, dangerous therapeutics. In 2002, the hormones of Bushmen were minced for potential weight loss therapies, human growth factors, was tested on pygmies before being used on Western children. Depo Provera, although a carcinogen, was tested on Zimbabwe, Zimbabwean women before it was introduced into the United States as a reproductive injection. And this is happening now, you know, this is in the 90s, so not long, long time ago. You know, and Doctors Without Borders, this is on page 391, Doctors Without Borders forged a coalition which included Bristol Myers Squibb, Bayer and the Bill and Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to provide drugs to Africans through 2006. But although sleeping sickness threatens 60 million people, only 7% 7, 7 of these have access to adequate medical treatment. So it just talking about how, you know, even under the guise of you know, these helping foundations, you know, are they trying to help or do they have a secondary motive? motive. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. so, and some of them, there's very good doctors that are with the Doctors Without Boys and some of these organizations, they're good people, but they don't know, they, they maybe don't know about the behind the scenes that's be, that they're being manipulated. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's, that's just, why, that's why I, I like to present this information because I was, totally manipulated and ignorant once. And I don't want to be that way if I can help it and can read beyond what's told to me now. So now it's my choice, right? Ignorance back then I didn't know, you know, um, but now that I know it's my responsibility, I feel like to stay, um, what's the word? Uh, to stay 
like woke or yeah. you know and to keep it stay informed you know to stay informed yeah and to do a little bit of research and don't take everything that you hear at face value mm -hmm. you know it, if something is too good to be true, or there's something you go, mm, that doesn't sound right. It's probably because it's not. Mm -hmm. So do yeah. a little research. Yeah, don't, don't be lazy. lazy. Yeah, don't be lazy. Be lazy. You know, like you say, get that power back, right? Mm -hmm. Don't just, you know, accept whatever everybody tells you. You know, take, you know, ha you have your, own, you have the power to mm -hmm. go and research. It just takes mm -hmm. reading, up, reading is something else. You know, looking into it a little bit more with a little bit more time. So that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa had one more thing she wanted to add. Here's Lisa. I said the thing that's important about this is because you things affect, only affect you if, if you want it to affect you, if you care about it. And so if you're saying, well, I don't have any, uh, why do I care about the black people or the, or the Asian people or the Indian people or, or any other people other than yourself, okay? You know, or maybe you're, you're, you're a black person, you care what, it, what goes on with white people. But this makes you see that this kind of stuff, once this stuff starts happening, can happen to anybody. And people are mixed now. There's no such thing as a, as a pure race anymore. And, and, and to think that there is, that, that's your first mistake. So stuff like this is very scary because it's still going on. You think it's not, it's still going on. So that's true. insane. That's insane. All these things that are happening to people based on the color of their skin, which they have no control over. Let somebody come after one of mine with some of that bullshit. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Good point. Hope it was informative and we could help in your journey in this life.